six months in and steadfast. That's the message that Moscow wanted to convey with these images of their soldiers on the Ukrainian front. Since the invasion of Ukraine on February 24th, heavy fighting by air and by land has not let up. But in recent weeks, both Russia and Ukraine's positions have barely budged. Since March, Russian troops have taken 82,000 kilometers squared in eastern Ukraine. That's an area around twice the size of Switzerland. But this summer, Russian troops have only conquered a few hundred. In the trenches, this Ukrainian soldier describes the effect that that's had on them. The morale is higher than the first days of war, when we've been losing and losing and losing ground. Then it was uh, higher when everybody expected that the Russian force will collapse the next day. And now it's somewhere like in the middle that... Russian forces have not been able to carry out Moscow's objective to annex the entire eastern Donbass region. This despite heavy artillery fire all along the eastern front and especially around Bakhmut, which is now in Moscow's sights. Nonetheless, the conquest has levied a heavy toll. According to U.S. intelligence, between 70 and 80,000 Russian troops have lost their lives or been injured. Some 5,000 vehicles have been destroyed. And Russia's air force no longer has free reign over Ukrainian skies. Meanwhile, Russia's been multiplying its strategies by handing out passports and rolling out nationalist ceremonies in taken territories, like here in Mariupol. While Russia's trying to hold on to its gains, Ukraine is on a counteroffensive. It's managed to take back a few square kilometers in Izium and outside Kherson. And above all, it's begun targeting Crimea, hitting by air munition depots, bridges, and a first, the headquarters of Russia's Black Sea Fleet. Despite the losses of some 9,000 soldiers, the Ukrainian army has, with the help of European and American aid, bounced back. We see that the Ukrainians have little by little become equal to the Russian army, which means they can no longer truly advance. So there's the possibility that the front line won't budge, which is what happened between 2014 and 2021. It's an option that doesn't please either side, but right now it's a possibility. To further help Kyiv gain the advantage and regain its territories, Brussels has offered training sessions for troops. And Washington has pledged a further $775 million in military aid.